I'm Whit Prouty. I'm part of the Martin Iden team. Unfortunately, Martin is not joining us today. He is on the road, though. Uh, so big shout out to him. They're joining the, uh, the March on Washington uh, tomorrow, Friday, August 27th, which recognizes the 57th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream. So big shout out to Martin uh, and family on the road. And today, I'm fortunate to have a good friend of mine, uh, Dougal Murray, the CEO of Racing Green Group. And we're gonna talk about uh, flipping homes in LA. So I think this ought to be a, a, a pretty good topic. And I think we'll get a lot of hits on this um, uh, afterwards. So welcome, Dougal. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us, um, tell us just a, a little bit about yourself and your company, and then we'll get into some more, more questions about flipping in LA. Sure. So we, we came to, uh, I came to LA in about 2010. Um, I used to, but pre prior to that, I was working in investment banking in the London markets. And I left in 2007 to just take a three month break to go and do a bit of backpacking around Southeast Asia. At which point the US economy collapsed, triggered the London market collapse, and um, three months ended up turning into three years. At which point, you know, after three years, my parents said, look, you've got to come back and do, do something instead of bumming around on beaches in Thailand and India. Um, so on the way back, I came through LA and, and met my, my, best, my best buddy from school, Jonathan Ward, um, who is now my, my business partner. And it was a really interesting time in LA because around 2010, the market was starting to come back up. There was a ton of foreclosure. Uh, like an absolute ton um, and just stuff just going dirt dirt cheap and I was really enamored with LA as a market um, just because it was so different from the London market which is where, where I'd grown up and the fact that you guys just have so much space here so I, um, I bought a property uh, in Van Nuys which is down in the valley um, people that don't know LA you basically have the west side Beverly Hills and you have this the Mulholland Hills which runs across the middle and then you have the valley on the other side so I think we paid 425,000 for that property. Um, and that came with the previous owner who was living in an RV with her pit bulls, selling methamphetamine to all the local gangbangers in the area. Um, so we dealt with that pretty quick, flipped the house, um, it took about 12 months to flip it. We sold it for I think about 950,000, uh, at which point we thought, you know, it's all right, let's do another one. So we did another that's one. Definitely not all, that's definitely all right. It was, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I think we put about two, 250, 300 grand into that. Um, so it was a nice little, nice little return on our money because we were just following the market. You know, the market was coming back up. Did another one, at which point where I met you. Um, I think you sold, me, you sold me the second house we did, which is on Ledge yep. Avenue in Toluca yep. Lake. We met in 2013. Right. So yeah, so sorry. So I, I came in 2010. I think I must have bought the house, the first house in 2011. We sold in 2012. And then, yeah, with 2013, I met you. And I did my second one. Um, I thought we, I think we bought that for, for eight, maybe 825 something, 7, 730. Was it 720? You bought it. You bought it for like 500 grand. <laughs> it was nothing. Yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was a teardown. It was down. cheap. It was, it was cheap. cheap. It was, it was cheap. a teardown for yeah. sure. You yeah. were really buying land. <laughs> and we... We flipped, we flipped that, uh, that, took, that took a little over 12 months and we sold that for a little over a million, a million dollars. A um, million two is what I recall. Yeah, a million one, a million two. Um, at which point, Jonathan, who was my, you know, my best friend from school, who I had come out here initially to meet, um, joined me. Because Jonathan was basically working in um, sort of effectively home services, you know, kind of a glorified handyman, but he was basically doing, you know, he's a very good looking guy, Jonathan, and he was basically doing all these ultra wealthy celebrity homes um, across the Hollywood Hills. So he had this client base, which was really just, you know, top, top notch. And he said to me, look, we've got a, I've got a client who's got this, bought this house in the Palisades. They want us to remodel their home. And it, we went in, you know, thinking it was going to be a $300,000 $400,000 contract. One thing led to another, it ended up being a one and a half million dollar uh, remodel for basically the top two producers 
in LA. I mean, these guys, they make the biggest films in LA. Yeah. Um, and once we'd done that, of course, we were basically pre-qualified because right. then, you know. So that's much. your Hollywood story. That was the Hollywood, that was the first Hollywood story, yeah. But Hollywood. I'm going to redirect. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell us your, your company. Um, I'm going to go back to some more like basic questions and then pull you through because we're, we're getting a good idea of you. But rather than, than just take the narrative through your story, let's, let's pepper it with some questions to begin with. So obviously from the UK, great accent. Americans love a British accent. Right. It's done, it's done <laughs> um, famous, yeah. So, but <laughs> why choose uh, Los Angeles over the UK? Right. So... We were, I was flipping houses in, in London. Um, and it's just, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's similar in some respects and it's a premium market. You know, London, New York, LA, um, they are relatively recession proof. Um, but, you know, we, when we came to LA, we just fell in love with it. You know, California is a great place to be. You've got the beaches, you've got the mountains, you've got the desert. I mean, it's all here, you know, within a couple of hours. Um, and then the fact that, you know, everything was very very cheap and we were we were doing houses you know in LA for you know for a couple of hundred thousand I was basically buying you know one bedroom apartments trying to squeeze in a second bedroom or a bathroom somewhere really in the kitchen and selling you know that was it it was just a, it was a volume game over here it was a little bit different because we could actually create basically whatever you want you know if, if, if you've been to LA you can drive, you drive around and there's houses of every different style and shape and color and that was, that was very attractive to me. So we came out here and, you know, let us, let us be a bit more creative. And we also saw potential. You know, I, I got told when I left, I said, why are you going to LA? It's not a great, it's not the market to be in. I said, this is, you're wrong. You know, this, California is the fifth biggest economy in the world. All right, just yeah. California. The, the state of California. The state of California is the fifth biggest, biggest economy in the world. And so, you know, and I just saw, you, you come to LA, and everything was flat because you have this huge, you know, the huge- uh, We have mountains. We have mountains, but in the basin, everything was flat. Everything was like, yeah. you know, one story, maybe two story, you know, and, and it's full now. So it's we only have, gonna go one way, it's, it's gonna go up. We have vertical, so, we, we have valleys and uh, a built out, uh, built out neighborhoods. So right. now actually you can go in, you can infill. Yeah. and take advantage too of properties that aren't built out as much as they actually could be right and that's that's what we saw you know and i love you know california architecture is fantastic you know you've got all these crafts you've got craftsmen you've got california modern um, i love the old spanish stuff you know we we did everything and when we first started um that's really what we focused on we focused on a lot of these real architectural homes you know doing the doing the craftsman's um, doing the old spanish and really that actually, you know, I was not a builder, I was a banker. Um, but I came in and we, we worked on these authentic homes and really honed our craft in terms of like understanding the architecture of, of, the, of that, you know? Um, whereas now, you know, everything we do is just very big and very modern. All right, we'll get into like what you're building right now um, in a little bit. Talk to us about um, a little bit about what you're seeing in the housing market post COVID. Well, actually, not I mean, during COVID. Let's be realistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah during um, COVID. I mean, for for us in LA, you know, it's actually been quite uh, an interesting time. When when COVID first hit, you saw a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of buyers fall out. You know, a lot of things. You thought, oh, there's going to be a market crash. Everyone's been talking about a crash. Um, we've got the election coming up in November, so everyone was was very angsty. Um, but actually, you know, what we saw was actually a lot of houses still closing because it's sort of cut the wheat from the chaff and people that were serious were closing on homes. Um, what I'm seeing now is there's, a, there's you know, everyone, again, there's a lot of people saying different things. You know, I'm hearing, oh, there's not a lot of inventory. Well, actually, when I look, up, look out there, there is a lot of inventory. Um, but what, I, what there isn't a lot of inventory, and that is good quality, well laid out new homes. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of crap out there and there's a lot of people out there now who, who have an inflated idea of what their house is worth. So what I'm seeing is a lot of price corrections for, of, of overinflated pricing. Um, and so some of that sort of stuff is sitting and, and is sort of slowly coming back down. But the stuff that's good, you know, it's got a good floor plan, good views, you know, well-designed, well 
is going like that. I mean, we sold our last house in three weeks for, for you know, basically asking price. Um, right. Buyers are willing to pay for quality, for good homes, right. for properties that they don't have to do anything to. Exactly. And then they're discounting for, for homes uh, where they feel they'll actually have to invest in. It'll take their time to remodel. All of these things that they just want to move in, pay for the home and enjoy it immediately. Exactly. And then also at the lower end of the market, you've got a lot of people who are you know, now working from home full time. They've got a couple of kids running around the apartment and they need to get out. Like it's not workable. You know, how do you do it? If you've got, if you've got a child, you've got a wife, you know, you and your wife are working from home. You've got to get out of these apartments. So a lot of people like the, the lower end of the market is sort of, you know, one million, one and a half million dollar market. There's sort of new homes or starter homes. That's what it costs in LA, starter homes. Yeah. One and a half mil. Um, you know, that, that market is hot because people are desperately trying to get into it. They're selling their apartments, they're trying to get into this. So um, for, for me, you know, the, conf the confidence is still there. W with the election coming up, you always see a slowdown approaching it. You know, we saw that, we saw that in the last election. But then as soon as the election is over, it doesn't matter who, who gets in, whether it's Biden, whether it's Trump, if, if it had been Hillary, the, it goes back up again. You know, um, I think if Sanders has got in, Maybe there'd have been, a, you know, a little bit of a different reaction, but still, I, 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 I see it, you know, every time market slows down, as soon as the election comes up, bam, there's, there's, a, there's a feeding frenzy again. Yeah, um, we do have statistical information about that, and we can absolutely look at our graphs for that. Right. So, you know, overall, I'm very confident about the market. You know, are we due a recession? Yeah, we are. So are we going to see a dip? Maybe, you know, maybe we're going to see a dip in 10, 15%. Okay. Well, I factored that in, but honestly, in this premium market, and if you look the same in the London markets, you know, the last recession, you know, if there's a, if there's a dip, you get a 5% dip, you get the Russian and the Chinese coming in and you think, right, great, I get a bargain and they're buying stuff up. And it's the same in LA, you know, it's the same in New York. We're this fortunate in, in, yeah, we're fortunate. And you mentioned an interesting aspect about Los Angeles is that, uh, depending on what happens in the U.S. market, that's when uh, our location tends to pull in foreigners who recognize value and then reinvest yeah. when Americans aren't investing yeah. in it. And it actually then helps bolster our local economy as well, too. Yeah. That's fantastic. So talk to, when you're purchasing a property, what are some of the key aspects that you're looking for when you purchase a property. People definitely want to know that. Yeah, so I mean, we operate in the luxury end of the market. You know, our, tip, our typical sales, sales price is between four and, four and 10 mil. Yeah, um, you've come a little ways since we met in, thir in 2013. Bit, yeah. you're, you're <laughs> you've gone up a bit. We've got, yeah, we've, I mean, it's, it's, we've, it's, you know, the, the, the company growth has, has gone very, very quickly. But, you know, I, I'm on my, on my phone. I use, I use Redfin as, a, as an app and I, you know, I have about 70 houses which come on the market every day in the, the areas that we operate. And very quickly, I can see, you know, what's the price per square foot and is that going to work? That, you know, that's the first thing I look at. Am I going to buy in at, you know, X so I can, you know, I know what my bill cost is and can I make a profit on the back end? Um, so first of all, I'll, I'll click through that. I'll look at the numbers. If the numbers look, okay, that's fine. I'll click into it. And then I'll see, you know, where's the, where's the property? Is it a decent, is it a decent lot? Is there a decent view? Um, because at this, at this, at this price point, you know, really location is, is everything. Um, and that's really, that's really what it's all about after that, you know, then we'll go right, into so you, property. So I'll, I'll you really are focusing in on, on, a, on an area and you know, then that area really well, correct? Yeah. I mean, so our area, our area really is the Mulholland corridor. So Hollywood Hills effectively, we operate in the Hollywood Hills from Hollywood to the, the Palisades. We've also got some stuff in Venice corridor. Um, and we've just bought a house in, um, in Malibu as well. So it's sort of very much, you know, that luxury corridor all the way through um, hillside, you know, all our construction is, is hillside. Everything has views. Um, and we're typically looking at stuff, you know, 4,000 square foot plus. That's what you're building, correct? Sort of built. Is there a minimum lot size that you're looking for? Not necessarily. I mean, I think it depends where you, where you go. Um, I mean, in some areas, I mean, we, I, 
probably wouldn't do anything under you know eight to ten thousand square feet. Um, but that's not a massive lot, you know. That's sort of an average size lot in LA, right? right. Um, so I mean, the Malibu house, we just it's one and a half acres. Uh, we've got a house in Mulholland. I think that's probably about half an acre. Um, but it's it's really about you know about views and location. And a lot of these a lot of these Beverly Hills homes, um, you know, they have they have very small lots, and you're literally they're literally on top of each other. But it's how you then you then build your architecture to um, mitigate that and give the privacy that people want because everyone out here is a celebrity of some sort, you know, so privacy is key. Yeah. So um, talk to us about the benefits of flipping house versus maybe multifamily investing as well too, because in part of the, the real estate world, obviously some people are like, you know what, Hey, I want to use my money and I want to flip it. Yeah. Other people are want to maybe a, a a different kind of investment and they look towards multifamily investing and you come from an investment background. Well, yeah, I mean, we, I obviously do come from an investment background, but also our, our deal structure is funded by investors. So, you know, all our deals, we have private investors who, who put money in our deals. Um, and a lot of them also, I'm sure have money in multifamily. Um, what's attractive about our offering versus multifamily is that it's, it's, it tends to be shorter term stuff, term sale. So you typically, you put the money in with us, we're generally in and out within about 18 to 24 months. Um, with multifamily, generally the, the process is longer, generally you're about three to five years. Um, multifamily is, might be obviously a little bit less, less sexy. Um, yeah. I think in downturns, you know, if, if the, the bottom of the market gets hit, then you have a lot of issues in multifamily. Multifamily guys will say different. They'll say, well, the luxury guys are the ones that get hit, but that's not what I'm saying, especially not in LA. Um, and what we do is obviously is we do a very unique offering with what we do. So it, it's very, very custom. Um, whereas with multifamily, it tends to be a little bit more generic. You know, you're looking at numbers. What's my occupancy rate? How can I turn my units with basically putting in the minimum amount possible which is effectively veneer countertops and you know stainless steel appliances that's generally what they do paint them and then try and get occupancy up um, yeah. whereas with us it's you know we're only doing eight projects a year that's it um, so it's just you know it's just they're just they're different they're, they're, they're different and the same you know um, for short for short term for short term yields you know I think we are definitely the more attractive option fantastic so what advice do you offer to people who are, are thinking of trying to flip a home themselves? I think the first thing is to obviously do your research, know your area, don't go into it. I mean, you know, the old, the old saying is, you know, you buy the worst house in the street and sell the best and that's great, but don't try and think that you're going to outperform the market. Look at your comps Work, you know, you, you, I market my deals on the comps now, not where I think the market's going to be in 12 months you know, but working on uplift. And then also just make sure you've got enough money in the back pocket when stuff goes wrong, because it will, you know, it always right. goes wrong. And it's how you deal with that and mitigate it. I mean, we have 35 guys working for us right now across 10 sites, um, and it's just a firefight constantly, you know? But it's right. how you firefight and how you mitigate it and just accepting that that's going to happen, you know? Do you need a construction background in order to flip a home? I think it definitely helps, yeah. I mean, we... You know, when I was, even though I was an investment banker back in, in London, I was, I was flipping homes on the side, even though they were small apartments, um, that has definitely helped. I mean, now, right. you know, I'm a fully licensed contractor. We have our electrical, concrete and general licenses underneath us. I have a crew of 35 guys who are all on staff. Um, and that flexibility, having those 35 guys on staff means that I can, you know, I can flex across those 10 projects. I think if you're coming into it as a, as a, you know, an average Joe, um, you've got to make sure you've got a good contractor that you trust and you've just got to make sure that your budgets are realistic because I think a lot of people come in thinking I can build a house for, you know, $200 a square foot. That, that ain't the case anymore. Okay. So that brings up a point. Do you have a horror story you want to share with us? Yeah, I got, I got <laughs> One of those story. nightmares like, Oh, <laughs> be careful if, <laughs> because this could happen to you. Yeah. Well, yes, we don't, we all know our, 
Wit and I had a, actually helped me with one of my, my major horror story. I had one, one development a couple of years ago, which was just horrendous. I had a business partner um, who was based, who I went into business with on a Spanish house in the valley. Um, and she just clearly, you know, she told me the, ha the permits were being handled. It was a disaster. Um, Hillside, know your business so, partner. <laughs> know, know your business partner. Make sure that if you're going into something, you know that you can get permits quickly without major issues. So seek advice up front. Um, and you've just got you, you to do your research, you know, because if you buy a bit of land um, and you can't build what you need to build, you've got to have a plan B. And luckily, that was the one, that was the one deal I lost, lost money on. Um, you know, I had enough, enough other projects coming up to basically manage that one and mitigate the loss. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, yeah. you've got to be very careful and, and be aware that, you know, if stuff does go wrong, how are you going to handle yourself? Right. It, it'd be nice to say that uh, ev every house was a 100% uh, and you you get a positive return. But let's be realistic. If you're truly in the business, you have your ups, you have your downs. And the idea is to have more ups than downs. Yeah. And I think, I think we're at the point now where we go into, you know, we go into projects knowing we've got the permit sorted. You know, it's, it, we don't, I think when you're learning, I mean, I, I say that was, you know, that was my $200,000 um, MBA, basically that, that project. Yeah. yeah that's what it cost me. But, it, and, it, and, and looking back, it was, you know, as much as that hurt, it, it was worth it because you just learn so much from those sort of projects. But once you've learned from them, you don't want to have, you don't want to have them happen again. That's for sure. Right. So who do you, um, well, actually let's describe, describe typically, um, like what you're building right now. And then maybe after you tell us what you're building, then tell us like, who do you typically sell your homes to? Yeah, so all our stuff, if you go on our website, which is racinggreengroup.com or our Instagram page, you'll see we have a very distinctive style, which is very modern, contemporary. It's very much earth tones, um, neutral palettes. Um, oh, cool. I'm gonna jump in. Yeah. How much, of the design factor are you do you hire a designer do you go by what they say how much is your aesthetic involved in the creation of these homes um at this point it's it's, it's all in-house so racing green design it's a racing green product that you sit that we, we we design and sell you know we obviously subcontract the uh the drafting we have the engineers they, they're subcontracted out but everything else is in in-house and we have so a this is a, a dougal and john uh design but, aesthetic exactly yeah you know and it's done as well we just uh we just had we, we featured had our projects featured in architectural digest twice uh california home we've, we've had our projects uh, featured there as well so it's all, we're doing we're doing all right in terms of the design but yeah everything we do now is very much very much modern contemporary um hollywood hills stuff typically um we're, we're between four to four to eight thousand square foot um and we tend, to, we tend to sell a lot to producers, directors, um, slightly more elevated aesthetic. So we don't do bling. That's not really our thing. There are developers okay. out there that do that, um, but it's very much more um, a mature, elevated taste. It's reserved. Reserved, but you know, we- Modern we, and but, clean. Um, yeah, but that doesn't, you know, we also have a lot of young, young guys. I mean, the, the market in the last few years, you're seeing a lot of these TikTok stars, YouTube stars um, come up, you know, through, they're buying these seven, eight million dollar homes. Um, we just did uh, James Charles, who's a very young, he's a young YouTuber, I think he just turned 21. Um, we just did all uh, his hardscaping for his, his new home, uh, project managed the interior Renault on that. That's about to be featured in Architectural Digest. Okay, so can you, yeah, share, share some of these Hollywood well, stories if you can. He's, he's really the only one I think we can actually talk about because he is very much um, about self-publication. Self I think everyone else is, we have like NDA contracts covering those. But it's, it's needless to say, it's a lot of, it's a lot of the, the high-end producers, directors, a um, lot of music guys in L.A., um, and then, as I said, you know, we're starting to see more and more of the, the younger, you, the younger TikTokers in Gen Z. You sold uh, that that flip house, that first flip house uh, that you and I, where we met on, you sold to a to a guy in the music business. Dub, a dub, yeah, very well known dubstep DJ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Very cool stuff. Very yeah, cool everyone, stuff. Everyone's famous, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I think everyone in LA, LA thinks that they that they are for <laughs> by association. <laughs> but anyway, so well, so what do you think? Are... It's been fun. Met, I've met some. I've met some pretty um some pretty cool people. You know. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the alternatives to people who want to invest in luxury real estate markets with maybe without getting their hands dirty? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of multifamily offerings out there. Um, big corporations that, that you can invest in and you can invest with us as well. Um, we have a project by project deal. So you can put in a minimum of a hundred grand in our, into our projects. We, uh, we have offerings which tend to deliver IRRs of about 30%. Um, there's also, you know, other partnerships. You can partner with contractors, um, you know, grassroots guys like that. And then obviously REI, REITs, um, real estate investment, tr investment trusts. So there is stuff out there. Um, you've also seen the, the rise of people like Fundrise, um, which are these online platforms, which take, you know, guys, people in similar situations where you put our projects on their um, websites and effectively crowdsource funding for those projects. But I don't think the returns on that are as good as, well, I mean, they're not because Fundrise obviously take a, take a cut of, you know, as, uh, by acting as the middleman. So um, if you wanted to flip a home, but you needed to raise some investment capital and stuff like that, um, what are your suggestions as far as like maybe trying to meet other investors? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of meetup groups up, out there um, to meet similar, similar like-minded people. Um, I think, you know, friends and family is always the first place to go. You know, if you can get a couple of buddies together and, and pull, pull your resources. But when you do do that, you've got to make sure that they're, in the, they're on the same wavelength as you, you know, to understand everyone's role up front. Um, right. I would imagine that that's really important as far as making sure that uh, any agreements are really spelled out uh, on paper, in writing, right. and with the vagaries <laughs> as little as possible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else that you want to tell us about as far as flipping or anything else that we should um, be aware of? Because quite frankly, you know, they have these television shows on TV. HGV TV has made a, a network very successful with these flipping shows. And it looks, looks, oh, it looks so easy, doesn't it? Except for the drama that, of course, they have to supply in each episode. But then it gets worked out magically and everybody ends up happy ever after. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think HGTV has a lot to answer for. Um, I think it looks great. It looks, it looks a lot of fun, but a lot of the time the numbers aren't included in that. So they don't include the selling costs, the holding costs and, and all that sort of stuff. So if you do go into it and I would say do it, you know, if you've got an interest, do it. I mean, we've, we've grown our company from, you know, that first house we bought in 2012 for 450,000. We're now operating, you know, we have $50 million in construction right now. Um, which is, you know, massive growth in the last eight years. So yeah, absolutely go and get, get involved, do it, but just make sure you run your numbers and just make sure you know that you've accounted for everything. And don't, don't overestimate what you think you can sell for. Cause I think that's, you know, we, we pick up a lot of deals from people that have, have basically stumbled and fallen along the way. You know, a lot of the deals we, we find in the, ha you know, in the, in the hills, people have got in, they've started, started building out, they've run out of money, the bank's taken it off and we've, you know, we buy it back off the bank cheap and just finish the project so just make sure you know that isn't you make sure you've got enough cash in your pocket to to get the job done fantastic well we are actually at the end of our half hour dougal i can't thank you flew enough. by way. flew by <laughs> it flew by <laughs> flew by that is fantastic um really uh la flipping uh pretty cool stuff going on in Los Angeles. You do amazing building. Uh, definitely check out uh, your website. Uh, Jared will put that information uh, on a link so that people can check out what you're building and what projects you've got coming up as well too, because you really do do beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thanks, Webb. Appreciate that. So appreciate your time. And uh, this will end it for this week, the 21st episode. Next week, we'll catch you in our 22nd episode. And I think Martin will be back uh, hosting that one.